Osiris has long been considered as the chief of the Egyptian gods who later took over the role of king of the underworld and ruler of the dead. The earliest mention of Osiris dates from the 5th dynasty, among which he was originally portrayed as a fearsome god, then transformed into a benign deity over time. He is usually depicted in human form as a green or black-skinned man with a pharaoh's beard, but often tightly wrapped in mummy linen with only his arms free, wearing a distinctive wreath. The Atef Consisting of a tall conical white crown of the Lower Egypt, and framed by long plumes of ram's horns. The color of Osiris's skin evokes not only putrefaction of a corpse, but mostly the new and growing vegetation of a fertile ground. In Egyptian mythology, Osiris ruled Egypt after his father, and was among the most significant and widely revered deities of the Egyptian pantheon. In some myths, he was born at Rosetau in the necropolis, known as the Underworld Gate of Memphis. The major elements of the Egyptian legend about Osiris can be summarized around his position among the Egyptian gods, the purpose behind both his death and afterlife. Osiris was the son of the sky goddess, Nut, and the earth god, Jeb. He was the first king of the upper world and earned the name Wenenifer, meaning, he who is eternally perfect an epithet that shows the passion he had for his kingdom. He was the one who taught the early Egyptians how to live, how to cultivate the wild wheat and barley, and how to make and use tools. His wife, Isis, was equally well-liked for the life skills she taught to women. But sadly, Osiris's reign over Egypt met its end when his violent brother Seth, who had already killed one of their brother, blind Horus, known as Horus the Elder, decided to go after Osiris and murder him for the throne of Egypt. This story explains why beside Anubis, Osiris was one of the first to be associated with the mummy rap after what his brother Seth has done to get rid of him. The myth described how Osiris was persuaded by Seth to step into a fitting sarcophagus, and once Osiris was inside the chest, Seth slapped down the lid, which he then sealed with molten lead and tossed down into the Nile River. Following the incident, the coffin drifted for many days then was washed ashore at Byblos, in the Lebanon where it became encased in the trunk of a growing tree. Eventually, the trunk was cut down and incorporated into a pillar, upholding the palace of the local ruler. After years of searching, Isis and her sister Nephthys found Osiris who was no longer alive and brought his cadaver back. But his brother found him once more, and chopped off his body into fourteen pieces which he scattered all over Egypt. Osiris's sister and wife, Isis, looked all over for his limbs, and gathered the pieces. With the help of the jackal god Anubis, who was at the time the god of the underworld, helped patching up the dismembered fragments together and made the first mummy, therefore resurrecting Osiris, enabling the god to return to life. Isis then transformed herself into a bird and hovered over Osiris's mummy, breathing life into his body and copulates with him, just long enough to become pregnant with his son, Horus the Younger. The scattering of Osiris's body was allegorized with the winnowing and scattering of grain in the farming fields of Egypt. The purely Egyptian account omits the incident of the sarcophagus and the discovery at Byblos. Following the myth, Isis is sometimes represented in the form of a hawk being impregnated by the erect phallus of the dead god. In another version of the story, Isis used a spell to briefly revive Osiris so he could impregnate her. She conceived and later gave birth to Horus, who would eventually avenge his father's death and claimed the throne that rightfully belonged to him. Since Horus was born after Osiris' resurrection, he came to be regarded as a representation of new beginnings and the vanquisher of the usurper Seth. Horus thus fought Seth for the crown of Egypt and ultimately triumphed. His relationship with the Egyptians' kingship became crucial. The early kings of Egypt were the divine embodiment of Horus in life, but were believed to become Osiris when they died. Osiris thereafter lived on and became the lord of the underworld, a role granted to him by Anubis, and started to be shown as a mummified king, holding the symbolic crook that represents him as the shepherd god, and a flail signifying divine authority. 
His symbol was the Jed Pillar, said to represent the spine of the god, and the stability of the underworld according to Egyptian mythology. Because of his death and resurrection and through the hope of new life after death, Osiris began to be associated with cycles observed in nature, particularly with the vegetation, the flooding and retreating of the Nile River, as well as the yearly growth and death of crops along the Nile Valley. Thus he was commonly regarded as the god of agriculture and fertility. Osiris was perceived as the counterpart in death of the sun god Ra, as the grain god. He was worshipped in the form of a sack filled with seeds which sprouted green, also represented by models with articulated members which women paraded through the streets at festivals, and manipulated to demonstrate the god's virility. The germinating seed symbolized Osiris rising from the dead. An almost pristine example was found in the tomb of Tutankhamun. Based on numerous manuscripts, the Egyptians' conception of the underworld was described as a narrow valley with a river running through it, separated to the living world by a mountain range, from which the sun rose and set. At the verge of the world where the deceased negotiated the path from this existence to the next one, avoiding perils with the precious help and guidance of the god with a dog's head who swallowed shadows and tore out hearts. As a final judgment, the dead were led by Anubis into the Hall of the Two Truths, in the tribunal of forty-two divine judges. There, the dead person's heart was weighed on a scale against the feather of truth. If the feather outweighed the heart, meaning that the person has led a life in conformance with the precepts of the goddess Ma'a, who represented truth, and right living. Horus then led the deceased into the presence of Osiris and other gods who sat as judges in the underworld to have an eternal and happy life. While ordinary mortals who were neither too good nor too bad, those whose hearts were in balance with the feather entered under Osiris's service. If the heart, heavy with shame and sins outweighed the feather, the person was thrown to the soul-eating demon, Amit, and did not share an eternal life. The person who was taken by the devourer was subjected first to a terrifying punishment then annihilated, suffering a second death from which there was no return. These depictions of punishment may have influenced medieval perceptions of the infernal existence in hell via early Christian texts. Purification for those who are considered justified may be found in the descriptions of certain great scripts, where the dead experience the triumph over evil and rebirth. For the damned, complete destruction into a state of non-being awaits, but there is no suggestion of eternal torture. The story of the death, mummification, and resurrection of Osiris was the myth that offered the Egyptians the hope of life after death, in the kingdom of Osiris. The cult centers of the gods' worship was located in Abydos, in Middle Egypt, where for more than 2,000 years, the mysteries of the god were celebrated. The first phase of the festival was a public drama depicting the murder and dismemberment of Osiris, the search of his body by Isis, his triumphal return as the resurrected god bringing along the gift of eternal life, but the secret rituals were never revealed. The chief embalmer and overseer of the mysteries enacted the role of the jackal god Anubis, the protective god of the dead. The ritual of mummification allowed the deceased to be identified with Osiris. Despite their rituals of death, mummification, entombment, the Egyptians were not obsessed with death, but with life. So, the real purpose behind these rituals of remembrance were to ensure that there's a new life after death. They wanted to live as perfect beings in the field of reeds, inside Osiris's domain, where the blessed dead gather in rich crops of barley and wheat. The cult of Osiris was widespread around Egypt. The god absorbed the traits and names of several local deities, such as Kentia Mentiu, the god of Abydos. At Memphis, Osiris became closely identified with the falcon god, Sokar, which earned him the name Sokar Osiris. While during the Greco-Roman periods, in the Ptolemaic times, he merged with the sacred Apis bull to become the popular deity, Serapis. The Osirian legend is known from pure Egyptian textual sources, and from an embellished account of great writers. Based from those texts, he was the eldest of four siblings, including his sister and consort, Isis, his sworn enemy, Seth, and younger sister Nephthys. 
Osiris was the judge of the dead and the underworld including sprouting vegetation and the fertile flooding of the Nile River. He was described as, he who is permanently benign and youthful, and the, Lord of Silence. Although the god is most closely linked with Isis, he was also tightly associated with Anubis, the mortuary deity and patron god of embalmers. With that being said, myths surrounding Osiris can't be mentioned without involving his illegitimate son, Anubis, and vice versa. Osiris was the god who brought prosperity and wealth to the land of Egypt, and will be remembered not only as an iconic figure of culture, but also as the pillar that holds the fundamental secrets and origins of the Egyptian religion and mythology. If you've enjoyed this video about the god Osiris, then go ahead and leave it a like, a comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to share around so that others might enjoy as well. Feel free to suggest in the comments below what you would like next. And as always, stay curious.